So, good afternoon. This is Brian Johnson with Think Great Lose Weight, and today we're going to go through grocery store foods and their importance and what their capabilities are in reversing symptoms, blood pressure, hormones, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So, we've got a lot of information to cover, so I'm going to go ahead and get going. So, just hang tight. Okay. Hey, Carrie, you can put your phone on mute, and then we'll go through questions afterwards. Okay. All right. So, all right, here we go. So basically, we're going to talk about the healing powers of grocery store foods, and we got a lot of stuff to cover, so we're going to get going. So disclaimer, none of this information is meant to treat, to cure any type of diseases. Anything we discuss, I highly advise you to check with a doctor, your physician, whatever it looks like for you to get some professional advice, so to speak, outside of what I'm going to share with you. So with that being in mind, let's have some fun. So I know you've probably heard the saying, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. And until I learned about the apple, uh, I didn't understand why they said that. And now I completely do. And we're going to get into the apple and the significance of it and what its capabilities are. So one of the main reasons why they say an apple a day keeps a doctor away is mainly due because of the bowel movements that the apple is able to produce due to the pectin which is a fruit fiber and it's very important that our digestive tract is functioning extremely well because that's ultimately where 85 percent of our immune system is located and if your immune system is, is or your bowel movements are not functioning properly when I say properly going one to two to three times a day Anything less than that is definitely a potential for some not so much fun. Um, the skin is where a lot of the phytochemicals are, and it's important to do a organic apple. If you can't get organic, get some veggie wash or a high alkaline wash, like 11.5 pH. That's what Chris and I use with our water machines, and that will clean all the wax and the pesticides off the apple. Cool thing about it is that the seeds contain small amounts of cyanide, which is amazing because it's a huge cancer fighter. I would not recommend taking the seeds of five or different five or six different apples and putting them in one smoothie. However, you can definitely use the seeds from one apple and put it into your smoothie and grind it up. Uh, I use a three horsepower blender and that takes the avocado seed and completely turns it into fairy dust. It takes whatever you'd like to put in there and it'll completely chew it up. I have not had a whole lot of luck with ninjas. I've given three of them away. So just do what works best for you. And now here's your cue to get some water. The Granny Smith has the highest amount of phytochemicals. And we already discussed how it's great for constipation. And the cool thing about the apple is that depending upon the apple, there's over 300 different phytochemicals in the apple and it actually has its own enzymes in it to help break itself down. How cool is that? So now we go to the next one, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar has some amazing health qualities to it. It's great for grout, uh, gout. I'm thinking Groot, <laughs> the movie. Uh, it's great for gout. It's great for arthritis. It's great for lowering blood pressure. It helps to stabilize blood sugars. You can drink it and or you can use it in your bath water for people who have got severe pains and arthritis. It works extremely well. I have not used that yet, but one of my friends who is very active uses that and Epsom salts in his baths, and he takes the Pepsi challenge on it, uh, saying how effective it is. So you can definitely try that out, and it's fairly inexpensive. You can get a jar of it for three to six bucks at uh, the store. So the asparagus. This is your number one vegetable from a detoxification mechanism. It is the number one food highest in glutathione. Now, glutathione is a term you should definitely become more familiar with. 
And the reason being is because that is our top enzyme in our body that is capable of killing millions of free radicals per second. So if you think about this, one molecule of vitamin C can only kill one free radical. One to one is impossible to even make a hairline of a dent in the amount of free radicals we ingest on a daily basis. It is a crazy number with 24 to 30 some odd zeros behind it. That's how big it is. I couldn't even tell you. Um, and glutathione is capable of killing millions of those things per second, free radically speaking. Glutathione is what induces the phase 2 enzyme, which is a detoxification process. It's not a thing. A phase 2 enzyme is a process in which every cell in our body has the ability to detoxify itself. And I'm sure that if you've had asparagus, you probably noted that when you went to the restroom, your urine smells a little stronger. Reason being is because our body is detoxifying our kidneys and our liver, and that's where you get the smell from. Very important. It's also a diuretic, meaning it helps to get rid of water tension, water retention. So it's definitely advisable to drink more water when you are eating asparagus simply for that reason. It's very high in potassium, which helps to balance out the sodium-potassium imbalance. Uh, and the best way to do it is to do it slightly steamed. That way you can break down the cellulose fibers and extract the minerals and nutrients out of the asparagus. The second one is the avocado. It's the second highest food in glutathione, which is, again, your phase 2 enzyme detoxification process. It's also a living fat, which is cool. Uh, it's very high in omega-9s, which is the same as what olive oil is. It's also high in lutein, which is great for the eyes. It has massive capabilities of lowering cholesterol. It has beta cytosterol in it. And if you look over to the right and you see that picture, you can actually use the seed to help reverse heart disease because that is extremely – that's probably the highest source of soluble fiber on the planet. You can take that and put it into a blender and chew it up, a three-horsepower blender, and it will turn that thing into fairy dust, and it does no taste to it, and it is extremely effective at clearing plaque out of our arteries. So we have better blood flow, better oxygen transport, nutrient delivery, toxin removal, uh, that whole shebang. Basil. Basil can grow and completely outgrow everything in your garden. It's amazing. It's extremely high in phytochemicals. And the phytochemicals are the nutrients, plant nutrients, light nutrients that are in each of these foods. They protect against sunlight, parasites, bacteria, fungus. It's also high in beta carotene, lutein, and zeaxanthines. Those are all three nutrients used by the eyes. Beta carotene is also used by the lungs. And basil is great for brain function. I actually have uh, Young Living Oils, and I will actually make capsules using uh, basil, fennel, uh, rosemary, and some other things specifically for brain function. And I can tell you that they have helped me immensely with my digestion as well as my clarity and my brain function. So beans. Beans are awesome. Beans are extremely low on the glycemic index scale, which last week we discussed, and that's how fast a food breaks down into a sugar in your body. And it's a zero, which is hugely important because that means that it does not spike your insulin or cr create a hormonal response that also triggers a fat storage response. Beans are packed in protein, they're packed in carbohydrates, and they're packed in fiber. They also contain what's known as a phytoestrogen, which aid in keeping the skin young. Also, if you eat too many beans, they'll also raise your estrogen counts. So you be mindful when you have them, how often you're having it, and pay attention to how you feel. And if you get your blood work done, which I highly recommend doing at least every six weeks to three months to see what your blood levels are actually doing, then you can figure out this stuff and watch. And I can just tell you from my personal experience, I went on a bean kick one time, and over a six-week period, my estrogen levels increased, which is not ideal for men. 
Uh, now, someone who's in menopause, women speaking, that actually would probably be okay. So it just really varies on the uh, varies on the individual. Refried beans don't count because they cook all the nutrients out of them. Fried once and then refry them. Uh, so the fava bean is a huge one. Fava bean is high in L-dopa, which is amazing for helping with depression and specifically the symptoms that go along with Parkinson's. The green fava bean is actually the best one. And I'm going to take a drink. All right. The beet. Beet. The beet beets disease. If you take a look at the pictures on the bottom right, you see the red beet, and you see it is extremely bright, and it will stain your clothes. Take my word for it. Now, some very important nutrition 101, and that is this. The colors of vegetables make a difference on what areas of the body they function on. Anytime you see orange or yellow, think eyes and lungs. Anytime you see red, you can think the blood. And the beet is basically, especially the red one, is a blood purifier. Anytime someone has a disease, and especially from a prevention mechanism, the beet is a for sure. It can actually increase your oxygen uptake up to 400%. It also has something called uridine in it, which helps with depression. If you have anemia, the beet is definitely something that you would desire to have in your diet because it is high in iron. And it's important to make sure if you do intake iron or the beet, pair it with some vitamin C in specific. Kiwi is your second highest source. Citrus fruits, because the beet, to specifically uptake the iron, you require vitamin C to do so. Um, and anytime if you've gone and had your heart checked out, they're going to check for levels of homocysteine in your blood. Beets lower homocysteine because of the betaine. And you know, you've probably seen supplements out on the market called betaine HCO. It's always better to get it from the actual plant or fruit or food as God intended because not only do you get that one nutrient, you get potentially thousands of other that go along with it. You can, I mean, the beat is amazing. You could go on for days. That just gives you some specifics on it. Bitter melon may, have, may or may not have actually seen it, but this is called the, the uh, Chinese cucumber. And this has thousands of phytochemicals. And this stuff is very similar to taking a shot of insulin because of how fast it stabilizes blood sugar levels. People who are type 1 diabetics, type 2 diabetics, this potentially could be something you may want to take a look at. You can fry it in coconut oil. They actually make bitter melon pills, bitter melon chips. There's ways that you can do it, and there's a lot of benefits to using this little critter here. Uh, it's got some stuff called polypeptide P and charantin, which are two of the biggest phytochemicals that scientists are studying and using and finding out a significant amount. You also see on there where it says apoptosis in uh, bold. That specifically means that it induces suicide in cancer cells. So anytime you see the word apoptosis, think suicide, meaning that negative entity or cancer cell is basically killing itself, which is ideal. And then when the body's functioning properly, immune system speaking, it will actually do that on a lot of cells that are destructing. It will cause them and put them into apoptosis, which is ideal when you have a cancer cell that is not uh, that is growing, you want it to kill itself, and that's when you know the immune system is functioning ideal. I have yet to see one of these at a typical grocery store. You you probably have better luck finding the bitter melon at an Asian grocery store, um, just because that's typically where they have them. So keep your eyes out. Blueberry. Blueberry is very high in the antioxidant called anthocyanins. Now, here's where we talk about the colors. Anthocyanins, you see that blue color, is also the same color or phytonutrient that is in the acai berry. 
the purple, the dark uh, berries, and specifically in this one, the blueberry, is very low on the glycemic index scale, which means that it turns to sugar very slowly. And they are amazing for our eyes. You can make jelly out of them. You can put them in your smoothies. I use blueberries a few days a week, so uh, whatever works for you, but try them out. You may like them. They've got a lot of health benefits. Uh, broccoli. So this is pretty cool. If you look on the bottom right-hand side, you'll see there's three different types of broccoli. you got a purple broccoli, a cauliflower, and then you've also got a green one. And each one of those has a different spectrum of phytonutrients. Now, the important thing to remember with broccoli and cruciferous vegetables is they have a phytochemical called an I3C, which is called an endo-3-carbonyl, which is a potent cancer fighter. Uh, cruciferous vegetables also have a sulfur called sulfurafame, which is a potent detoxifier. Now, here's an interesting part is because I didn't even know this until probably about three or four years ago, but most people, when they only eat the, the flowerets or the crown of the broccoli or the cauliflower and they throw the stem away and crazy enough is that the highest amount of phytochemicals specifically called glucoraphin is found in the stem so when you cook it keep that and eat it that chewier part the whiter part that's where you have a lot of phytochemicals in there, even more so than what's in the part that we're typically eating. It's also your third highest source of glutathione, which we discussed a little earlier, which is a phase two enzyme inducer. And that's vastly important for us as humans and our immune system to function as optimal as possible. So now we get into carrots. This is pretty cool too because you see the different colors of carrots. Now, so the orange, remember, is for eyes and lungs, beta carotene, vitamin A. Carrots are also very high in pectin, so they're great for helping with constipation. The purple carrot has anthocyanins in it, which is for eyes. Anthocyanins in the purple in specific are potent at causing apoptosis or, can or a, a suicide in cancer cells. Uh, they're great for the eyes and lungs like we already discussed. And if you're going to eat those, it's ideal to pair them with a good fat source. And then specifically, olive oil works well because it helps to absorb the vitamin A, which is a fat-soluble vitamin. So now we get into celery, one of my favorites. And this actually worked well for me. Uh, when my teacher told me about this, I actually had high blood pressure at the time, and I was eating six celery stalks a day some just normal and some blended and sure enough my blood pressure dropped now we won't get into wheatgrass today but I'll mention it since we're on the topic of blood pressure uh, wheatgrass is your number one blood pressure lower and you must be safe if someone has high blood pressure and they're on meds you definitely want to get some professional instruction and at least make sure you're checking your blood pressure often as you implement these because they can work very fast uh, celery has high amounts of sodium. When I say high, not high like overbearingly high, it takes over 30 stalks to equal what you would need for a really, uh, recommended daily allowance. Now, you also see something called thalides. pH is silent. Thalides relax the blood vessels around the heart to allow the blood pressure to drop. And the thing about celery is, is that it's also high in fiber and it will clear out plaque. The best way that I've found to do celery is to throw it in a three horsepower blender and to turn it into fairy dust. Because if not, you're chewing on them. Uh, but either way, it's fine. It's great to use with dipping. Like if you want to use it with hummus or uh, almond butter or something like that, those work great too. So cilantro, this is a big deal right here. Uh, I grew up in Houston and Pasadena, Stinkadena, around lots of chemical plants and cilantro is a big deal that is your number one heavy metal chelator which means that that actually goes into the body and it pulls all of the metal toxins out of the fats now here's some very important information because fats are stored or I'm sorry toxins are stored in fats and we have a couple of places we have in our body fat 
and we also have our brain, which is all fat. So when you start coming down or when people have symptoms of Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, ADD, brain functioning issues, potentially there are heavy metal attachments that are attached to the fats in the brain. Now, if you use cilantro, this is very important. What the cilantro is going to do is it's going to chelate or it's going to pull out like a cat, like clawing out the toxins out of the brain, and it's going to put them into the bloodstream. Now, if you don't have a phase 2 enzyme food or available glutathione at the same time, what's going to happen is that stuff is not going to be pushed out of the bloodstream. It's going to circulate back through and reattach back into the areas that it was already in. So if you're going to eat uh, something like, for example, seafood has a potential to have a lot of mercury, especially tuna, uh, shellfish. Uh, there definitely can tuna be leery of, uh, uh, but you can definitely hit a Google search and it'll tell you what all the stuff with potential mercury toxicity. But if you're having cilantro, it's always good to pair it with the asparagus or the avocado or both. It depends on what you're looking for, but it's good to have that because that way if you're eating something that has metals, like say for example you're eating tuna fish and you have some cilantro with it, go ahead and have some avocado and some asparagus with it so that you can detox all the stuff out that could be potentially coming in from the fish. Cinnamon. Cinnamon is potent for multiple reasons. It's an anti-inflammatory agent. It's anti-blood clotting and is amazing at stabilizing blood sugars. If someone gets sleepy after they eat or they crash, you can take cinnamon after you eat and it will balance that out. It's also antimicrobial and antifungal. It's great for candida. Now, candida, here's some cool information for you. Candida is also a thought pattern of doubting. So those typically will go hand in hand. Um, it's great for people to use, like I said, who crash after meals, and especially for people who have candida or yeast issues. That's also good. Uh, we'll actually get into the belief systems and stuff that kind of go along with these specific uh, scenarios a little bit later. Cherries. Cherries are potent in the sense that they help to remove uric acid, which is what can potentially cause gout and kidney stones. They help with arthritis, and they also have high amounts of melatonin, which helps with insomnia. And specifically, if you do use the cherries, the Montmorency cherries are the best for having the ins uh, melatonin for insomnia. And I'm going to get a sip. I'm drinking this new apple cider or Bragg's organic conquered grape acai, and this stuff is great. I'm addicted to it. All right, chia seeds. Chia seeds are a very potent seed, and I say that from the sense of the Mayans used to eat these, and that's actually where they came from. And chia means strength. They are the highest omega three containing food, which is ALA, or alpha linoleic acid. Very important for controlling inflammation. It's also a blood thinner, so if you are on blood thinners, you require being aware and safe because they will make your blood thinner. Uh, they also pack five times the calcium of milk, and if you're drinking milk, cow's milk, unless it is completely raw, I highly advise you to find something different. Coconut milk, almond milk, either one of those are very viable and potent and actually very good options. Uh, and here's some, something else too. It's cool. Chia seeds can absorb 12 times their weight in water, which means that if you're an athlete or if you're looking for something to slow down your blood sugar absorption, you can do this with chia seeds. I, what I'll do is I'll take a handful of them and I'll throw them in a mason jar and I'll put some water in there and some flows, frozen blueberries. 
and I'll leave them there overnight, and they'll soak up all the water, so it's kind of like a chewy. Have you ever had caviar when you eat sushi? That's what they kind of feel like, and that's what they kind of taste like. I mean, you can you can change the flavor profiles, but they're amazing at giving you a very potent superfood in a very small amount of food that packs a serious nutrient punch. Raw cacao or chocolate. Now, raw cacao is awesome. E, they have a ton of different raw desserts that you can make with this stuff. I love to have it in my coffee, in my oatmeal, and it packs a serious brain punch. And the reason why is because it's high in polyphenols. Uh, specifically, polyphenols aid in heart disease uh, reversals. So it also contains natural psychoactive chemicals like L-DOPA, which is what we discussed earlier that helps with depression and Parkinson's situations. And there are actually a lot of studies done on it. Specifically, there's one done at Harvard with 8,000 people that showed that chocolate lovers actually live longer. The idea is to have 80% dark or more. I'm craving chocolate now. Now, Jean Comet, this is pretty crazy. She lived to be 119 years old and ate two pounds of chocolate a week. And here's the crazy part. <laughs> My teacher was telling me this. Her doctor at 119 years old goes, you know, I don't know if you should be eating that much chocolate. It might kill you. And so she backed off on her chocolate and apparently she uh, passed on like two weeks later. So uh, have some chocolate. I think I will take you up on that too. I expect to be 120 as well. And there definitely are different ones. Uh, raw cacao is one of the best, definitely one of the best forms to get. And the least broken down and processed you can get, the better. Uh, I actually get a lot of my superfoods and some of my products at food-healing.com. That's where I get a lot of my reishi tinctures, my ginseng tinctures, um, a couple things that they have that are kind of rare, but that's definitely a good place to source um, awesome products. Coconut oil. Coconut oil is amazing. Coconut oil, is, its biggest component is called lauric acid. Lauric acid actually dissolves the fat layer around viruses. That's important because viruses have a fat layer around them. And what happens is, is our immune system is not designed to break down the fat layer around the virus to expose it so the immune system can destroy it. What the lauric acid does is it goes into the system and it will identify herpes, AIDS, HIV, flus, colds, viruses, and it will identify those and it will eat the fat layer around the virus and expose the virus so the immune system can actually kill it. Lauric acid is actually found in breast milk for babies and that's why the baby's immune systems have the potential to be so potent because that is its first uh, immune system boost is its lauric acid in mother's milk. And here's the crazy thing. Coconut actually burns like a carbohydrate, which is fast. It doesn't burn like a typical fat, which is typically slower. Uh, and here's something that's also pretty cool. If you ever get diarrhea, coconut shavings, sautéed in coconut oil will pretty much put that to a stop fast. And the cool thing, and one other cool thing about coconut is that you can actually cook with it. And here's the important thing. If you're cooking with oils, I only advise using three. One is coconut oil, two is real raw butter, and three is ghee, G-H-E-E. -E. The reason why I suggest those three is because they are saturated fats, which means when you heat them, it doesn't change the structure of the nutrient to where the body doesn't recognize it when we ingest it. So the body doesn't create an immune response or an autoimmune response to the foods that are supposed to be nourishing us. Now let's talk about corn, and that's some pretty crazy looking corn. It's purple corn, and you can see the different colors in it. You can see the really bright orange and the really bright yellow. Um, that gives you an idea of how nutrient dense it is. So if you're ever looking for corn, there's a couple things. You want to make sure that it's still in the shuck because that protects it or the cover on the outside. of That's what protects the corn. Uh, most corn is sprayed and is genetically modified just because that's how it is. If you can find organic corn and when you look at the corn, make sure it has good vibrant colors in it. If it's really pale and white, I would skip it 
because what's happening is, is you're not getting a lot of nutrients, period, from ingesting that food. Now, if you can find good corn, it has amazing brain foods. It's amazing brain food. Uh, it's great for your eyes because of the lutein. It's great for your brain because it's got something called choline, which is a phospholipid or a brain fat. And like I said, the color and the pigment is a direct indicator of how potent the nutrients are. Buy it in the husk to protect it from sprays and make sure you eat it raw. Don't cook it. If you cook it, you're cooking a lot of the nutrients out. I'm getting a sip. Cucumbers. Now, here's some interesting information perhaps. For the longest time, even to this day, there are a ton of commercials saying drink your milk for your calcium. Now, how often do you see cows drinking milk other than when they're babies? You don't. You see them eating and grazing in pastures for hours at a time. Now, grass doesn't have calcium in it. Grass is loaded with silica, which leads me to say this. Calcium is not what's responsible for your bone density, nor will it ever be. So, on that note, here's why we're going to discuss silica. Silica is actually what's responsible for bone, hair, skin, nail, uh, and bone density. That's extremely important because what happens is when we actually drink milk, milk is very acidic, meaning when we drink it, our body has to figure out a way to neutralize or alkalinize that acidity. So what it does is it takes calcium from our bones, our joints, and our teeth to neutralize that. And that's a bad deal because that technically means what we're getting bombarded with advertisement and marketing wise is to drink your milk so your bones stay stronger. Yet in the United States, we have the largest uh, epidemic of um, osteoporosis on the planet, and we drink more milk than anyone. Eskimos are even worse. They're actually because they eat well bones and blubber, which is even worse than that. That's why their teeth and stuff fall out. So the deal is. Focus on silica. Your second highest source of silica is A, the cucumber. Your first source is horsetail, which is a plant. You can get it in capsule form. Um, but if you ever have a bone, a joint, or a tendon, or a ligament issue, and you take horsetail and double up on your cucumbers, it will help you immensely. Cucumbers is also the most alkaline vegetable, so when it's hot outside and you're trying to hydrate, the cucumber is definitely the way to go. Uh, like I said, it's the second highest source of silica. Silica is what's responsible for our hair, our skin, and our nails, and our bone density, not calcium. Organic is definitely a great idea. And I tell you what, I get kind of upset when I go to the store because I'm actually in the store three to four days a week. It's kind of one of my favorite pastimes. And when I see a $3 cucumber, um, it kind of makes me a little upset. So if you have the option, I would advise you to start your own little garden and create your own stuff. Put your own little love into your own uh, plants, and that way you have them because that's just ridiculous. Now that the demand is coming up, the cucumbers and the plants and all of our produce is going up too, so it's kind of – but – and I believe that it is coming to a fix, and I will choose to continue believing that. So the next cool thing about the cucumber is that it's great at balancing your blood sugar. It's also great if someone has a urinary tract infection because of the alkalinity. You can take a cucumber or two and blend it up in water and put it in your fridge and drink the cucumber water, and it will help immensely with alkalinizing the bottle, give you, give you significant amounts of energy just due to the type of nutrients and the alkalinity of the vegetable. And when you eat it, if you don't get – a organic one, use a veggie wash or like 11 and a half pH water to clean the cucumber. The mo a lot of the nutrients are found in the skin, so don't peel it if possible. Now we're going to talk about eggs. Eggs are awesome. Eggs are the protein standard by which all other proteins are compared. They are actually the most bioavailable or user-friendly, provided there are no food allergies. 
They provide the building blocks for hormones. They do not raise bad cholesterol. That has been a huge argument for a long time that it raises HDL levels, and it actually does not. There's a lot of new research that's come out that's proving this to be inaccurate. They contain high amounts of lutein and zeaxanthins, which is again is great for our eyes. And it also is like the corn. It's high in phospholipids, which are brain fats with choline and lecithins. Uh, I eat eggs often, and if you can, this is interesting. I get eggs from my mom and my dad's place. They live about an hour and 20 minutes from me. And when I see them, they bring me eggs from their chickens. And I'll tell you what, I invest seven to eight dollars a dozen for eggs that I get here at the store. And one day I was making some eggs and I cracked two from the store and I got two from my mom and dad's house and I put them in the same pan and wow, what a difference. Needless to say, I was kind of perturbed because the ones I got for free were about a hundred times better. And you can tell by what the color and the vibrancy of how the pigments look or how orange the yolk is. The yolk, so you know, the whole egg has six grams of protein, the yolk has two and the white has three and there's five grams of fat per whole egg and also too we're not we're not going to get into supplements this week but we're going to talk about them in the next week or two there's something called egg shell membrane so say for example when you boil an egg and you're cracking it when you peel that first layer off you'll see a really thin membrane that you may sometimes pull off with the egg now that's what's known as eggshell membrane, and that is the highest source of glucosamine, chondroitin, hyaluronic acid, collagen, everything that our joints are currently made up of in our body. That's the best source to find to replenish those nutrients for our bone, bones, our joints, and our soft tissue and our ligaments. And they actually make a supplement uh, called eggshell membrane from... Uh, or at uh, food-healing.com. You can find it there. I haven't found it uh, anywhere around here, but if you have joint problems, I highly recommend dropping the glucose, glucosamine and chondroitin garbage and getting the eggshell membrane. All right. Eggplant. Eggplant is amazing at lowering cholesterol because what it does is it actually goes into the small intestine and it sponges up all the oils and if you ever cut an eggplant and you look at it you can see it because it's kind of spongy and you also look on the outside of it it is purple anthocyanin um, it, the, the main active phytonutrient is called chlorogenic acid that's also in the green coffee bean craze where you probably heard a lot of it and seen a lot of it. Dr. Oz and all those uh, people have been promoting green coffee bean well one of the active compounds in green coffee bean is chlorogenic acid uh, eggplant also helps to fight cancer and if someone has skin cancer there is a product called Curaderm topical out of Australia that has had amazing results with that and it's using the eggplant now my favorite guaranteed to get you kicked out of your house and make you sleep in your spare bedroom or your tent <laughs> uh, garlic garlic is amazing it's just like the beet it beats disease. It's definitely something I highly advise using as often as you can. Uh, problem with me when I eat it, my friends can smell it on me because it comes through my skin, which is not really advisable for business. So you may want to eat it on a Friday when you're hanging out by yourself or whatever that looks like. But I have to be I have to be very technical when I have it around my house because uh, Penny can smell it and she's definitely not a fan of it. So, but on another note. From a healing perspective, it's very antiviral, it's an antibiotic, antifungal, and anti-people. It does not destroy our good bacteria, which is amazing. That's just like charcoal. Activated charcoal, you can actually take when you have food poisoning. The Japanese cultures will use it topically when someone's been bitten by a brown recluse spider because it pulls and sucks all the toxins out of the body without taking all the good stuff. Say, for example, if I were to swallow a bunch of poisons, the first thing they do when you go to the hospital is they put charcoal down your stomach. The charcoal, when it gets into your intestine, if you've got food poisoning or medications, what happens is, is the charcoal will absorb nothing 
but the bad stuff and leave all of your good nutrients in there for your body to thrive off of. How amazing is God doing that stuff? So if you're ever out in the woods and you've got a fire and you require filtering water or you come across a poisonous snake, take that charcoal and drink it or put it on topically and it will help you immensely. It may even save your life. So it's best to eat raw to avoid destroying the allicin. It's good to add ginger to balance it because it's a very yin food, meaning it is cooling. It thins the blood. It's good to balance out yin and yang foods if you are trying to make sure you are staying balanced. A yang food is something that increases the heat and the circulation, which is what ginger does. Uh, and we said earlier just a few seconds ago that it lowers the blood pressure. It's also a blood thinner, and it's rich in sulfur and alanine. And sulfur is a detoxifier. Uh, and the pills are no good. You're going to see a lot of that crap on the shelf. I highly suggest if you're coming down with a cold or something, just get two or three cloves and make a garlic pesto clove uh, dip or something of that nature because the pills are a joke. You're, when you take something or when the, when the manufacturing companies find a niche and they say, oh, wow, this garlic stuff is really hot. We're going to take it and sell it. What happens is when they take that one nutrient out of the whole plant or the whole garlic, for example, there's thousands of other components that help that one component to function so much better when it's paired with it. That's why it's there. If you're going to do it and you're looking for maximal benefits, always do it the way God intended, which is raw, just the way he put it on the planet. Now let's talk about ginger, and I believe we're almost done. Went by pretty fast. Uh, so ginger. Ginger is amazing. It's one of your top pain killers and uh, inflammation inhibitors next to turmeric, which we'll talk about next week. Uh, it's a COX-2 inhibitor, which is what Aleve and Advil actually do. It's a yang food, which means now that it's getting cool outside, this is something you can definitely make ginger teas with. If you're in a lot of pain, you can make what my teacher calls fire water, and hence the term fire water. It's hot real hot. <laughs> you can take a two or three ounce piece of ginger and, or two or three inch, inch piece of ginger and completely grind it up in a three horsepower blender and make a tea out of it or drink it. But I tell you what, uh, it will light you up from head to toe. It will make you extremely warm. And for some people that's great. People who are cold, have thyroid issues and their blood's not circulating well, definitely the ginger will help with that. It also has about nine compounds that are similar to serotonin and help with anxiety. It thins the blood and it also helps with circulation. It's amazing. I use it on frequent occasions with my smoothie because it helps to balance out all the yin foods like the broccoli and the cucumber and the asparagus and things I may use in my shake. So now, this is one of my favorites right here. And I actually just bought a bag of goji berries today because I'm going to show you the ones that I use. Goji berries are amazing. They are one of the strongest superfoods on the planet. There's a lot of different sources out there. I've tried some of them, the ones that HEB suck. And I say that lovingly. There are some ones by Dragon Herbs, which is Ron Teagarden. He is the man, the dude, when it comes to tinctures and when it comes to getting high source cordyceps, goji berries, tinctures of ginseng. I actually have an ant tincture from him that's pretty amazing. Uh, but basically, goji berries are a complete source of protein. They are loaded with what's called as a glyconutrient, which aids in cellular communication. It has high amounts of arginine, which is a vasodilator, which means it opens up the blood vessels to help blood flow get to areas of the body, especially people who have sexual dysfunction, the ED, infertility. Goji berries is a solid place to go. They're high in glutamine, which is amazing. That actually helps to repair the stomach lining, and that is an amino acid that accounts for about 80% of all the amino acids. It helps to rebuild muscle tissue, conserve muscle tissue, helps with immune system function. Uh, glutamine, I can't say enough about glutamine. Now, here's the cool. Their goji berries are also called happy berries and berries of youth because they help to secrete HGH, which is human growth hormone. Um, and like I said, they're great for infertility and people with ED. Uh, they're the highest in beta-carotene. If you take a look at the red color, 
that gives you a dramatic indicator of the nutrient profile. If you think of a sweet potato and a, and a, a, a carrot, the goji berry is the highest in beta carotene of all of those. Like you can take one of these bag of goji berries that I'll show you here in a second, and it's equivalent to 25 pounds of carrots in beta carotene. And you can see from the dark red color, which is crucial for our eyes and our lungs. Next one, the grapefruit. Grapefruit and citrus fruits in specific, orange, uh, lemon, grapefruit is probably the highest. I believe orange and grapefruit are both pretty close. Uh, but the, the major component and constituent that's the big deal in the head turner is what's called lemonine. It's a potent cancer fighter. It aids in glutathione production, which is what we discussed earlier. That's our natural innate or man slash woman made enzyme made from protein that comes from the liver in our body. And that's what is a huge uh, immune system boost and it helps to knock out millions of free radicals per second. Now here's the cool thing and this is very important because most people kind of like when we talked about the broccoli, when most people cook the broccoli they only eat the top part or the crown. Okay. This is another one of those things to be aware of because if you're really choosing to maximize the health benefits and uh, potential from our foods, this is very important. The white part of the grapefruit, meaning when you shave the outside of it off, that white part has a mass amount of nutrients in it, specifically called d glucurate which is huge and potentially helping to reverse breast cancer. Same with the orange. And the same with lemon. So if you're making a smoothie and you use the lime or the lemon, just shave the outside part of it to where it's still white and fuzzy. The white part is immensely packed with nutrients. Just like the apple, when you cut the apple open, you have a really white, dense part. And the core, the core and the seeds is where all the mass nutrients are. And that's when everyone throws away. That's one of the reasons why I prefer using a blender because you can turn that stuff into fairy dust and drink it without chewing on that hard stuff that's a little bit difficult to chew and break down. That's one of the reasons why the blender works so well because it helps to masticate or break down everything and break all the nutrients out of the cellulose fibers so you have 100% absorption which is immensely different than us chewing our food just a little bit and only breaking it down just a little bit. Okay. Blending, like I said, is crucial for maximum absorption. Now, here's a couple things. I have a Blendtec uh, blender. I don't get paid or represented or compensated by them by any means. So you can use Blendtec. You can use Vitamix. I would prefer or at least suggest and recommend that you use either one of those. I also, well, here's another one. I got one from my parents called an MTN, like Mary, Tom, Nancy, for half the price. Ultimately, Love yourself, make the investment, and get a blender because it will change your life. It also, the grapefruit speaking, is also high in pectin, which is what we talked about earlier that helps lowering cholesterol and helping the bowel movements. And this is also a big deal. If you use the grapefruit, you definitely are advised to use it by itself and because it does not mix with medications. I've had multitudes of clients that will talk and talk about things when we mention grapefruit and specifically doctors will say do not eat this with your medications because it will render them useless. So make sure you know that. Like I said, just check with your physician on all this stuff before you decide to implement any of it. And we are at the end and I'm going to show you these goji berries real quick but check it out. You know how it goes. If you don't make time for your wellness you will make time for your illness. So hang on real quick and we're going to get over to a question mode. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, you can take your thing off. See, check these out. These are the Ron Tea Garden goji berries I use. That's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> Yep. Um, I love these. And, and you Where can did tell you get those? I got them in natural grocers. Okay. You can tell they're really good because they are still moist. 
when you get them out. Awesome. And they're packed, so make sure because they are loaded with sugars too because they are fruit. If you're going to do them, make sure that you use them in the morning or before your workout or something along that time. Don't just snack on them because they're pretty nutrient dense. So maybe I could just throw them in my smoothie instead of the other berries or something? Yep, and if you do decide to do that, let me know, and I'll help you do the math, and we'll consult on it. Okay. Coolio? Uh, cool. Any uh, questions? I know I did. Hold on. Let me look at my notes. Oh, for the cilantro, um, is it best raw? Yes. Any of the stuff that I talk about, especially when you're talking foods like all the things we discussed today, it's always going to be better raw because you're not heating it and denaturing any of the nutrients. You're maintaining the medicinal qualities of it. Right. Yeah. And I have an awesome cookbook here at my house, two of them, uh, for vegan foods for my coach with smoothies. And I also have one that has pestos and crazy desserts like uh, avocado hollandaise sauce made out of the seed. So you're more than welcome to check them out if you would like them or I can order some for you. Sounds awesome. Yes, for sure. <clears throat> um, yeah, because I get bored. <laughs> yeah. Same. Have you started using or have you perused through the recipe stuff that I sent you or did I send those to you yet? Um, you sent them to me. Okay. I haven't really made anything yet. That's fine. So yeah. just start looking into them because that way we can start going through some different stuff and keep your taste buds fresh because ultimately you're talking a lifetime here. So anytime you can find some different things to kind of maneuver through, you're definitely going to just feel better and your taste buds are going to like you. But, I, I mean, you may be like me. I kind of get to where I'm just on a kick and I'll eat the same thing for a month. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. Eating the same so. old stuff. Whatever I works. do get bored every once in a while, but I mean, like if I get I get bored with the chicken, so I'll just do salmon or cod or something like that. But I mean, I don't really change up yeah. too much. I like it. Awesome. Um, well, I'm getting the machine tomorrow, so after two thirty, so I'll let you know what's up, and I'll come on and check you out. Awesome. Cool. Sounds good. Yes, All right, sir. Enjoy your night. Thank you. Bye bye. You too. Yep. Bye.